the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. Here at the Vito and Vito Show, I'm Vito. And I'm Vito. We want to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vito and Vito Show. You can check out our website, www.vitoandvito.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Vito and Vito Show. And if you're a little confused as to what you're listening to, let me have my co-host formally introduce ourselves to you. <laughs> you have the honor and the privilege of listening to two Vitos from Liberal Hellhole Brooklyn. We are young college conservatives, principal conservatives, who are telling you the truth Everything you need to know about the world and politics happening today. That's right. VitoandVito.com is the website. You can find more information there. That's right. Check go, out our articles that we write. Mm-hmm. When I and you porn. can check out former shows as well. A little bit about who we are. We're two college conservatives, like Vito says. We bring you the principles of individualism, free market capitalism, unregulated capitalism. I'm an Ayn Rand devoutee. Vito is a... Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Uh, Vito has an Oedipus answer. complex, and I have a John Galt complex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just read the teleprompter. Well, that's the problem, Barack. There is no teleprompter here on the Vito and Vito show. Broadcasting live out of the basement of the Empire State Building, you can listen to us and be wowed because we're narcissists. We're from Brooklyn. That means we're going to give you the truth. We're going to give you the straight-up truth. They're not going to sugarcoat anything for you. And being the fact that we're in college, we're going to be very, very crude with our humor. Case in point. You like sex jokes? Like sex jokes. Like lots of big, long, hard sex jokes for you, ladies and gentlemen. Sitting at home. If you're looking for a Christian conservative show to talk about the Bible and morality, about love and peace and Jesus Christ, it ain't for you. Not here, at least. Hey, I'm a Christian conservative. All right, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And women. And women, that's right. We're not going to quote the Bible, we're going to quote Atlas Shrugged, and we're even going to quote a little bit of Playboy. Vito and Vito, check more out <laughs> at VitoandVito.com. Vito! Vito. Jeb Bush is running for President of the United States. And so is my mother. And so is your mother. Everybody else. Everybody's joining in the race. You know, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. We keep throwing candidate after candidate into the Republican field, crowding out good candidates, filling it up with some bad ones. Donald Trump... Announcing this week that he's running for president, hey, Donald. I mean, this is crazy. This is this is just, this is crazy. Mm. We have over what twenty something people running for president of the United States. We have a few more actually. If, you know, uh, I know the IRS uh, former commissioner. I think he announced he's going to start running. Uh, there's a few independents oh, who are conservatives. Uh, my mom, I said. Um, <laughs> Any other bushes want to join the race? Well, I mean, welcome. Look, this is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's like a big, real, big tent. Listen, everybody. 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 When are, when we're talking about another Bush running, I mean, don't you get fed up with having these people get recycled over and over again? Hillary Clinton, George Bush, Jeb Bush, this Bush, your mother's Bush, everybody's Bushes and Clintons are coming to the... You know, I can make... <laughs> it just hit me right now. I can make a sexual joke about those two names, and I'd probably get kicked off the internet. Uh, I'd probably get kicked off the radio. And have to move on. Howard to Stern's like, doing know, good. Basement somewhere. What? Howard Stern's doing good. Howard Stern is, you know, Howard Stern. I said Clinton know. pretty quick. I thought of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and we're off to a great start here on the Vito and Vito show. But listen, I mean, you you keep running and recycling these these you know this these political dynasties, these political families mm-hmm. over and over and over again, and it doesn't stop. And I mean, a lot of these people are just political hacks looking to to create a name for themselves. Look at Jeb Bush, running for president of the United States under the Bush family name. H.W. Bush, a rhino. George W. Bush spent a lot of money. I mean, th- this is... You are running the same type of candidate, ladies and gentlemen, on the Republican side, and it's getting annoying. 
Because grassroots conservatives like mm-hmm. us don't want to see this. We do not want to see this. We're, we're strong advocates for Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, uh, you know, principled conservatives like Mike Lee and the rest. And then you got people like Jeb Bush, Chris Christie, uh, uh, John Kasich, and all these other rhinos running around saying how they're going to reform government. No, I want someone who's going to shrink the damn government, the, the federal government. Mm-hmm. I want to see constitutional debates and, and conventions being called. I don't want to see how we're going to, you know, right, but this th- might increase be, the retirement age for two years of Social Security. This might be a good thing. How? Having all these different rhinos. Well, I think run. It, okay. Explain. Because you mentioned we compared to 2008 and 2012 when the Republicans nominated a moderate, John McCain mm-hmm. and Mitt Romney, both very moderate, arguably Democrats. But why well, did arguably. this happen <laughs> in the primaries? Okay. Because the Repo- there were more conservatives than there were moderates running last primary. Well, you had Michelle Bachman, you had Rick Perry, you had uh, New Gingrich, New Gingrich, Santorum. Gingrich Santorum. This goes on. Then, you know, the, the moderates, Mitt Romney. Well, the moderates, really. Tim Pawlenty? Who? Exactly. <laughs> John Huntsman? Who? Why? Before he dropped out. But you see, then the moderate, all the moderate votes went to one guy, and the conservatives split up all those votes. Mm-hmm. You would argue between conservatives, or who's more conservative, Newt Gingrich or Rick Perry, or this and that. That splits up the vote. But now, we see in 2016, if the conservatives can get behind one candidate, Ted Cruz or Rand Paul... Or maybe even like Ruby or Walker. But you can see, see the moderates split up all the votes between Christie, Jeb Bush. You know, you can see all these different candidates, whoever jumps in, Donald Trump, whoever's going to mm-hmm. draw all these votes away, and more rhinos jump in, and Lindsey Graham. The list goes on. All those moderates are going to be splitting the moderate vote, right. while there's less conservatives to split the vote. Well, the question is. Are we going to unite behind the conservative candidate? And I mean, we're going to get just to a little bit later on in the program why Jeb Bush is a rhino and why I can't stand this guy running for president. But let's take a look here, ladies and gentlemen, if, if what the conservative plan is. I mean, what, look, we talk as conservatives and libertarians and people that want to really reduce the size of the federal government that we want to see a candidate who is willing to take on the issues and fight for principles. And those principles, like we said before, free market capitalism, individualism, we're all in agreement on this. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, which guy is going to do it? Or girl, I don't care. Or transracial, transsexual, transgender Whatever you person trans, trans. is going to get up there and actually reduce the size of the federal government. And the question is here, which conservative running for 2016 is going to do that? You got Ted Cruz, you got Rand Paul. I think those guys could do it. Uh huh. Then you got guys like... Rick Perry, who seems like a notable candidate. Scott Walker, maybe. Not, I'm not too sold. Eh, him, Rubio, maybe. Eh, not sold yet. Nah, nah, it's starting to slide down the it's scale of people who down. aren't really going to do it. So, And then you get, ugh, Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, Jeb Bush. Pataki. Oh. The Donald. The Donald. I can't wait to talk about this guy. The Donald. The Donald. Then where, where, are, those con- where are those conservative principles? Well, that's... Well, what is that? Where is that life living? Right. Where is that... You know, everyone hates Obamacare. Well, who's talking about repealing it? Well, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, you got conservatives and mm-hmm. libertarian-oriented candidates who want to shrink the size of the government, repeal legislation that, you know, mm-hmm. never goes away. Like, what percentage of federal law actually gets repealed? A very, very small amount. But why? Why can't we, why can't we do this? Why? Oh, it's passed. Let's stop talking about it. Well, you know, these programs that got us into this hole for decades, like Social Security, Medicaid, Medicaid, Past decades ago, nobody ever touched them. Now, we, you know, we're supposed to be bankrupt soon. Well, no one's going to touch them because you can look at the leadership the GOP puts up. And the GOP runs around, Jeb Bush and these fools run around saying how they're going to shrink the size of the federal government. They use conservative rhetoric. They use libertarian philosophies. They use the ideas of, of, of you know, what the founders, what the founders stood for. And they seek to, to run on and gather your votes, gather grassroots support in an effort to raise morale of the, the base of the party. These people lie. They straight out lie to you. So why do you want to hear that? Why do you, why do we settle for that? When you don't... I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this th- th- this is the defining moment about this Republican Party. This this election coming up. Because it's going to... After running two moderates in a row, and George W. Bush, which... W- w- don't even get me started. And I happen to like him in the foreign policy realm. Yeah, I know. He was nice to make fun of. All right. But, but, I mean, I when it comes talk. down to spending, he increased Medicare. I mean, here's somebody that said he's going to shrink the size of the government, and he, he expands Medicare. You know, no child, left, no behind. child left behind. The stimulus package, auto bailouts, bank bailouts. A lot of it goes through him, too. So, how are we really going to do 
what it is that we want to see done. What, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? And the answer is to start electing conservative mm-hmm. candidates. Jeb Bush is no conservative candidate. He's a straight-up liar. And they're going to lie to you just like I think George Pataki is going to lie and all these other fools in an effort to try to blind conservatives or fake them or fraud them mm-hmm. into thinking that these people are principled conservatives, which they're not. They're not. They are not principled people at all. These few people who do stand on principle. Like Lee Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, you know, the Tea Party people we're talking about. Those, that's who those few about. people who stand on principle say and do what they're going to say. Those are the, those conservatives that we need. So when you go into, well, I'm not compromising mm-hmm. all my principles. It's right. not, oh, they're too polarizing. They don't mm-hmm. work. They're not helping government. They're too extreme. They're too extreme, too radical. <laughs> too radical because last time I heard Ted Cruz talk, he went to follow the Constitution, life, mm-hmm. liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and follow your God-given rights and protect you from the, an oppressing government. If that's not radical, if that's radical... I don't know what people talk about. I, I mean, I, that's just ridiculous. You know, and another thing too about these conservative candidates, and this is, and this is one of the reasons why I can't stand Jeb Bush or the Beltway insiders that go out and support him, because they're all talking about, oh, the, 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 the radical rhetoric that comes out of the conservative camp, those fringe right wingers. Well, those fringe right wingers are talking about constitutional amendments. You know, we're having a debate on these issues. We're having Ron Paul. God bless that man, because I happen to really like him. Some issues I disagree with him on, and we can go on for days with libertarians. But come on, Ron Paul's a great guy because. He's talking about, and I think he starts the conversation, and it spreads over to the Tea Party movement, and then it spreads, you know, over to Ted Cruz, where he starts talking about the Seventeenth Amendment and the income tax and the idea of a flat tax and doing your taxes on a postcard and 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 you know the elect direct elect uh, direct election of senators, you know, instead of having before the, the amendments, speaker, right? Before these amendments, like the original intent yeah. of the founding fathers, right. you know, this is this is what you see out of guys who are quote fringe right wingers who can't win elections. They bring up philosophical conversations that you would never think of having with Jeb Bush as president of the United States. You would have mm-hmm. the status quo. You would have, oh, let me have my political friends be protected. Let me give a tax cut and a tax break for this big corporation. Let me give a tax cut and a tax break for this person who wants to donate to my campaign. Instead, when you have people on the fringe right wing who are looking to completely reform or, or, or you know, scale back the size of government, we're talking complete societal shifts here. Damn it, if, if the left can run Barack Obama and they could run crazy left wingers like Bernie Sanders, why the hell can't we run somebody on the right? Stand on principle and make radical changes for the safety of this country. Why can't we do it? It's nonsense, in my opinion, when you have moderates and, and the press and, and Beltway insiders telling you that Jeb Bush is the only person that could win. The idea of compromising on your principles is a virtue. It ain't, ladies and gentlemen. And the, I'm going to quote Barry Goldwater, which I suggest everybody reads the book Conscious of a Conservative by Barry Goldwater, former Arizona senator. Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. And moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. Ain't nobody going to run around with that in the Jeb Bush side of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to happen. You know who else were called radicals? Washington, Mass. These people were crazy. Crazy. And they formed the United States of America where you live today. So why can't we defend those liberties and principles? Listen, all this talk about Jeb Bush being a rhino, let's go ahead and define what it means to be a rhino. What does it mean to be a rhino? Vito? Holding no virtues or principles. Okay. Or I would say people that say one thing and do another. John Boehner, Mitch McConnell. Uh, oh my God, who do we have in the Republican camp that says one thing and does another? Right, because you see these Republicans saying that we are, they, yeah. they're going to stay on principle, so they get the votes to get in, right. and then they do nothing. Yeah, they lie to the base. Yeah, they, lie so to they, have, who they hold no there. principle. Right. They're a puppet. So, they go where the money goes. Right. So Jeb Bush, and I think where they stand on issues as well. I mean, conservatives genuinely believe in shrinking the size of government. They're individualists, stuff like that. So, let's take a look at Jeb Bush's position stances. And the two big ones that, that stick out is the fact that he supports Common Core. And he supports amnesty, a pathway to citizenship for illegal immigrants in this country. If you don't take the illegal immigrant argument and knock yourself out, bud. Knock yourself out, buddy. 
We have a law in the country. Not literally. <laughs> the immigration law is to deport but that is wide open. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to make a fun. I'm not going to make, make a few yet. open like uh, open. <laughs> But, good boy, wants to allow these illegal immigrants, who apparently is about 10 million of them in the United States, to have a pathway to citizenship, to allow them to become legal citizens. Jeb Bush supports a pathway to citizenship for these illegal immigrants who broke the law. These illegals, which Democrats don't like saying because that offends people. <laughs> Right, their status is illegal. They came here legally, which one is a slap uh -huh. in the face to the people who came here legally. Right, the United States is based on legal immigration, and then you have these illegal immigrants coming through the border, which should be closed. Right? That doesn't help. And then you're allowing these about 10 million immigrants to get a pathway to citizenship. That's breaking the law, right? That's very simple, basic mm -hmm. American law. Mm -hmm. Okay, but here's the thing: if his argument is that you can't deport them all. Well, you said they come here for love. Illegal immigrants come here for love. Great. So why are we laying everybody else in the world? Right. Millions and millions and millions of people. Give us your tired, your hungry, your unhuddled masses, and, you know, have them sneak across the border while right. they're doing it. Because you remember this, when Obama was talking about amnesty, that we had thousands of little Latino children on the border? Uh -huh. What do you want to do with thousands of children on the border without a mother? Give them to right. you. Right. If so, if I knock on your door, right, and there's a baby on your step, what do you do? Well, I don't know. You have nice bazooms over there. You could... Breastfeed them, right? <laughs> no, we'll talk about biology <laughs> with you later. You know. <laughs> hey, if Caitlyn Jenner could do it, baby. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, if we have ten, if we know there's ten million illegal immigrants, if we know there's a number, why can't we deport them? Doesn't that make sense? If you can count them, why can't you take them? Right. <laughs> why can't but, you deport but them? But this goes to show you how out of touch is with the base. The, the base of the Republican Party doesn't want this. The base of the Republican Party does not want to see amnesty of any kind being passed, but rather, an, you know, uphold the rule of law. So we go to show you strike one right off the bat. He doesn't care about the base, and he's going to lie, and he's going to finagle his way to the top. Mm -hmm. Number two, Common Core. Okay? This guy wants to run as a Reagan conservative. We're going to hear this all the time. Everyone's going to talk about Ronald Reagan. Great man. He's on the wall right now, right next to us as we do the show. <laughs> a few walls, a few pictures. And it's not being upheld by tape, by the way. Something else, pe pins. Something else sticky is up on the wall, well, holding up these posters. But listen, good job, Vito. He's a handyman. Ronald Reagan sought to eliminate the Department of Education under his tenure as President of the United States. Uh, I don't see Jeb Bush trying to eliminate the Department of Education like Ronald Reagan if he's looking to expand federal standards with Common Core. Grassroots activists are pissed off about two things in this country. A lot of other things, but two. Immigration and education. When you cannot do your child's homework at night because you don't know what the hell a common core math problem is, you can thank Jeb Bush. When your job is taken by an illegal immigrant at the supermarket, you can thank Jeb Bush. So think about this, ladies and gentlemen. When you want to uphold conservative principles, Jeb Bush ain't your guy. Plus, I can't stand the people that support him because they're a bunch of pretentious, elitist Republicans who are white, who can't stand, who, who are the rich white guys of the Republican Party. Like, these people don't care about the grassroots. They don't care about the problems that affect average Americans. They care about them friends. They care about the, uh, what is it, the Chamber of Commerce. They care about nonsense Republican PACs and BS campaign contributions. These people are the problem with this country. And damn it, I get so pissed when I see people run around arguing for Jeb Bush and how he's going to be a great reformer. The guy's going to do jack squat. But Vito, he's electable. He's electable. What, you know, you know who knows electable? People who get votes. Literally. When you go to the voting booth and you check the person you want, that's an electable person. And guess what? Everybody is electable. The question is, who is effective? Who is actually going to make a difference in this country? If you think Jeb Bush is really going to make a difference, I'm telling you right now, pal, stop smoking pot. And give some to Vito. Listen, Vito and Vito, when we return here on the program, a little more about Jeb Bush, about his campaign, how he's campaigning. Vito's going to break it down in ways that only he could see because he's stoned on LSD. And we're going to talk about Donald Trump, an opportunist, if I've ever seen one. When we return right here to the... K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we're expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio, 
and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. The Vito and Vito Show. Yeah. And welcome back to the Vito and Vito Show. Follow us at Vito and Vito Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And check out the website, VitoandVito.com, for more information on just who these two fools from Brooklyn are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As we break down conservative politics today in America. Just before the break, we were talking about Jeb Bush. Jebby. Jebby running for president of the United States. And, and, and you know, I I noticed how he was campaigning was, was just... I mean, you could it's it, you could just smell the pandering on this guy. I mean, I, Vito, uh, I think it's you're ridiculous. Smelling something else. <laughs> Jeb, 2016. That is his slogan. That's his uh, campaign. Okay. Jeb with the exclamation point. You saw the picture? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's original. It's simple. It says Jeb. <laughs> simple design for simple people. I got you. <laughs> Keep right. it simple, too. My mom always told me. Uh-huh. But here's the thing. I always found it interesting, right? Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, Rick Perry, right? Anybody else to use their last name, <laughs> except for Hillary and Jeb. Ah. I hear everybody, including my mother, say, I don't want to see another Clinton Bush, Bush Clinton, Clinton Bush. Well, you don't have another Clinton Bush. You're going to have Hillary Jeb, right? Mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Hillary. That's who she's going with. Hillary 2016. Everyone just keeps changing their identity. I love oh, it. Look at this. Love it. Jeb. Not Jeb Bush. His brother and father were not even there. At the ceremony. Really? They weren't there? Except for Barbara. Well, well, I don't care what you say, ladies and gentlemen. Barbara Bush has got something, and I want to find out what it is. Listen. <laughs> but it's interesting how he does not use his surname. Uh-huh. His father and brother, other presidents, other politicians yeah. who in his family were not there. Mm-hmm. He's obviously isolating himself. Well. He, from the other bushes. Well, he does that on purpose because of the last name. The, the, that's the yeah. thing. So he's sort of like lying about who he is. And, and people already in the media and on the left and the Washington Post and the Republican establishment have come out and said, oh, you know, he's not like his brother. Well, exactly. He's much more liberal. I mean, <laughs> he's that's, right exactly. He's even more rhino-ish. I mean, this guy really is not like his brother. At least his brother tried to pretend to be a conservative. Here's Jeb Bush basically saying... He's, right. You know, I'll say conservative talking points, but at the end of the day, he's going to come out and and right. be yeah. much more moderate and on the fence and look like the more rash quote rational candidate. But we know technically he can be exactly like his brother and right. his father. Right. But you know, he was the governor of Florida. Yes, he's his own person, yeah. the old Jeb. But yeah, it, this is not like a dynasty in the United States. Is we it? have a republic. Yeah. And huh. yeah, okay, fine. Okay, we have boring of the different bushes, but fine. Give him a try. Fine. I'll give I give him a fair shot. Really? But he's a rhino. <laughs> I so, give him a fair shot with an asterisk next to his name. <laughs> well, no, you know what? If Jeb Bush walked in for an audition, I'm not okay. gonna say you're a Bush. Leave. No, 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 no. I'll no, feel no. fine. No. Let me tell you. Let, let me hear you out. He says, "All right, I want Common Core." That's an X. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I give him a few minutes to talk. You could see where he stands on a lot of these issues right now. I mean, I don't know what his position is on trade. I got to look into it, but I'm telling you now, it's probably very much in support of this trade, this quote free trade deal, which is but very so, progressive yeah. and nonsense filled mm-hmm. and secretive, apparently that nobody can read. Most progressive free trade yeah, deal. I mean, ever. this is whatever. But we see how he's trying to uh, separate him from the other, his him and the rest of the yeah. Bush family. But also, he's immediately playing with demographics. Well, what do you mean? Because. He, the whole thing, he, he was talking in Spanish. He was speaking Spanish. Okay. Everyone who spoke before um, him spoke Spanish. The pandering, yes. Wait for it. Yes. He had uh, a few musicians play some beautiful music. <laughs> he had a very to be band. all in Spanish. <laughs> it was all Spanish music. Did he have I thought I was listening to like, Mark Anthony. Did he have a mariachi band like sitting up there and performing for him? No. Really? It would have been funny, though. That would have been funny. That would have been the icing on the but cake. But he, like, he's doing that whole... Like, I thought it was Marco Rubio out there. I thought, he, I, I thought Jeb was going to come out and say, when my family brought me from Cuba. <laughs> like, this is Jeb Bush. Like, his like kid's name is Preston. Prescott. I'm sorry, Prescott Bush. Like, that's a white southern name. <laughs> come on, George and Prescott Bush. Yeah. And he's trying to play off that word. He's Hispanic. Well, his wife's Hispanic, right? Good. Good. <laughs> She's not running for office. There's a, but, but there's the fundamental flaw in Jeb Bush's game plan. Is, and that, ladies and gentlemen, just goes to show you the ridiculousness of the... Political climate status quo we have today is identity politics reigns high. 
Jeb Bush is going to run around and he's going to say, I am standing with Latinos and hola, Espanol. And he's going to say blah, blah, blah. And he's going to carry around his wife and he's going to show mm-hmm. everybody just how Spanish he is. And, and it's <laughs> pandering. The guy is outright pandering to get votes from the Latino right. community. I mean, he's not... Fo- and if you're a Latino and you're like, wow, Jeb Bush speaks Spanish, he obviously should be president of the United States. <laughs> but, yeah. You're an idiot. You're just, you're, it makes you're, you're more sense like Marco Rubio with Ted Cruz. But, like, but even if... What, what, me, so I'm much- a Jeb. <laughs> <laughs> so what if you speak Spanish? I, I, I don't see... Just because you're bilingual means you're president material. I mean, what? what? But here's the thing. This is also the Republican primary. So find me how many Latino votes are in the GOP primary. You know, like... You Good the point. Conservative, the moderate. Good point. Jeb Bush is going to win the primary because he has Latino vote. Well, well, I don't think so. Well, this, the well, the argument is well, he's got to grow the party somehow, so we got to increase. Grow the party. Yeah. Okay, so let's get all the Latinos in now. Let's steal them from the Democrats in the amnesty. So we'll agree with the Democrats. We'll let them in for free, and then they'll vote for us. Does that make sense? No. We'll just keep them out because they're illegal. Well, not Follow all. the law. Well, be careful. Not all Hispanics are illegal. No, I'm talking about the illegal ones. But because the Democrats, right? Why do you think well, they support amnesty? Yeah, well, right. And a lot of it is, well, amnesty is being supported by Democrats. Because, because when it brings Democrats in support amnesty and illegal Im- immigrants are now fr- uh, legal Americans, boom, they vote for the Democrats. Exactly, exactly. And if you look at the polls, Pew Research and stuff like that, uh, a lot of contemporary polls as well... <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> the hand signals, you know? <laughs> the hand signals so people don't know what I'm trying to say. Oh, my this God. This is radio. What are the you privilege doing? Of radio. The privilege of radio. Oh, yeah. oh, you haven't noticed the camera in the bathroom. Never mind. Never mind. Listen, you haven't noticed the camera I in the, the shower. Listen. <laughs> and I'll plead the second. Yeah, the NSA is watching. Nice. The good. I like that. I'll plead the second. Listen, you know, if you look at a lot of the polls and the research uh, being conducted by independent groups, Pew Research like that, and you take a look at people uh, in contemporary groups, like immigration groups, if you ask Hispanics, what is the number one issue in your Hispanic community? That a lot of the people who, who seek to draw in Hispanic voters... Are only catering to illegal immigrants. I mean, they're not so high on a lot of Hispanics' priority list mm-hmm. in terms of politics. I'm just saying. Education is. Which is shocking when you realize that the education position that Judge Bush, Jeb Bush holds is one which is anti-education. <laughs> so, you know, I, it's a contradiction in two terms. Mm-hmm. But, these immigrants who came here legally, you know, remember, it's a slap in the face. Well, well, okay, you came illegally, you yeah. broke the law, and people are struggling to come legally. He's just gonna let them all stay and break right, the law. Right. See, you know, we're gonna let this one slide for mm-hmm, ten million people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, just goes to show you, ladies and gentlemen. Just the the you know, Jeb Bush is not just at odds with the base of his party and the grassroots activists that put people in the Republican nomination. You know, the people who actually vote in the primaries. But now you have him at in, you know at odds with the Hispanic community. This guy thinks he's gonna get votes by appealing to the lowest common denominator in the Hispanic community just because he speaks Spanish. Like you you ass. What are you doing? How insulting You're gonna run around and say Si hablo español and you you're gonna expect to bring people What, you're gonna translate your ads yeah. into Spanish? Oh, wow he speaks Spanish too His and his prime motive is to Don't basically sell people's intelligence. Yeah I mean that's it's horrible. The, his main motive is just to pick up Hispanic voters. I mean, but he's not looking to actually engage them. He's just looking to pander mm-hmm. to them. We see the same it's embarrassing. Thing. He we should be embarrassed. This, yes, we see the same thing with Hillary, with her campaign. Oh, video, 100%. When half of it was uh, either gay people or yes. women. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, women. I care about women. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you're a girl? Really? I don't care if you're a guy? It's time we what? had a woman president. doesn't care? It's time we had a woman president in the White House. Like, sweetheart, here's the deal. I don't care if you're a woman, you're transgender, yeah, both. racial, both. <laughs> I don't give a damn if you're gay, straight, black, white. I don't think anybody honestly gives a damn. It's where you stand on principles at the end of the day. Do you stand on principles? Do you hold values? Do you, what, do you, what do you fight for? What are you looking to do? I don't care what you are. Show me what you believe in. That's, that's the question that we should be, you know, pounding at Washington. Not... Show me, or any elected official, any elected office, not your identity or who you identify as. I mean, if Caitlyn Jenner decides to run tomorrow, and she comes out as a strong constitutional conservative who wants to scale back the size of government and, and abolish the IRS and repeal the income tax and and legalize drugs, the transgender version of Ted Cruz, yeah, like like support. like a she's or like a Ron Paul type or like a like you know something like that. We get it. <laughs> 
Damn it, you better sign me up for the Caitlyn Jenner campaign for Congress or whatever the hell it is if that's her belief system. Caitlyn 2016. Caitlyn 2016. She's a Republican. If, that's what she means. Yeah. But if she's a Republican who's like, oh, you know, maybe we need a welfare state and maybe we need... Why does she sound like an old lady? Like, huh? Why does she sound like old All rhinos sound like old ladies. Look at John Boehner. That's right. That's so, so right. Alcoholic. Oh, he is. He's a drunk. I thought stories. you were bad. No, well. Yeah. With that not, keg. <laughs> not to speak of that. We don't sit on chairs here, ladies and gentlemen. We sit on <laughs> kegs here in the Vito and Vito show. Oh, it's a mess. Don't ever come to New York. I actually, keep talking. I'm getting a drink. And try to find this. You're getting a drink. He's getting a drink. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vito and Vito show every week. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. <laughs> That's what we're on. Every Thursday, 8 p.m. on We Are America Radio. Check out the website, vitoandvito.com, for more information when you could hear our syndicated shows. And uh, we encourage you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Vito and Vito Show. Vito, it's halftime here on the Vito and Vito Show, and this is the time of the week where we like to talk about, you know, crazy moments in politics. We like to give out our Twitter fan of the week. We, we, we. This is this is the fun part of the show. If you're not having fun already, so let's break it down. Forget about it. Moment of the week. Yes, the forget about it moment of the week. This is where we pick the top three most craziest. Moments in the political world, or any or any world for that matter. <laughs> wherever you're living. Whatever, wherever you're living, if there's a new story about it, we're going to look at it and we're going to go ahead and scrutinize it. This is a moment where you say, oh, really? Did that really happen, Vito? And I say, oh, yes, it did, baby. Forget about it. It really happened. The Brooklyn saying, which basically means, yeah, unfortunately, forget about it. this is a part of humanity. Vito, the number one forget about it moment. Donald Trump is running for president. That's a whole that's segment. Not, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> Donald Trump also said that Oprah as vice president would be the unstoppable ticket in America. Trump and Oprah. <laughs> the Donald. Yep. And Oprah Winfrey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. I, 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 can't, I Go to VitoAndVito.com and tell us how much you support Oprah and Trump for 2016. Number two. The state of California decided to cut off water to a community called Mountain House. They're cutting off water supply. <laughs> they just, that's because of the drought in California. Mm-hmm. They just, that uh, liberal environmentalist, because they, didn't, uh, they were looking to like preserve species, endangered, blah, 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 much environmentalists. Because crazy when you hippies, don't have water. They got together and they basically mm-hmm. you know, blocked off the buildings of brand new infrastructure that would conserve water in case of a drought like this. Sure enough, the hippies got what was coming to them and they got a drought and now there's no water. Right, because when you have a drought... The best way to stop a drought is by cutting off water going into place with drought. <laughs> what can I tell you, Vito? They're looking to conserve water. Which I find it hilarious that California, which is directly, you know, next to the Pacific Ocean, has no water. Okay? <laughs> Number three. It must be so tough living in California. Oh, oh, I just can't take it. Number three, Vito. <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. Oh, this is oh, this is great. This is the transracial one, Trans-racial. right? Transracial. Yeah, this is the woman who claims that she was a... Uh, she claims she was is black, but she was brought up. She's white, like Michael Jackson. She basically she dresses in blackface and she runs around, calls herself black, and talks about the black struggle. Uh, I, I can't take it anymore. I, I can't take it. I mean, now now we on the show actually support transgender people. Yes. We, we think that hey, if it's a legitimate concern, knock yourself out. But I'll tell you why transracial issues are fake nonsense. Because if you look about it, someone who's transracial. You know, what is race? It's a social construct, but what is the, the race role that goes with a black person or a white person? I don't see one. There's definitely a gender role that goes with being a man or a woman. Men gotta be masculine, etc., and women gotta be feminine. Well, if they wanna blur the lines, knock yourself out, Caitlin, or RuPaul, or whoever you wanna be. Vito. Go crazy. Vito, sometimes I dress in a wig and call myself Tootie. But it's what I do, right? It's, it's what we do. There's nothing wrong with that. What I don't do see, you? but I don't see how someone could claim that they're transracial. I don't see. Well, I have an announcement to make. I don't see what the story is. All right, go ahead, Vito. I'm coming out as a strong, independent black woman. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> Medea. Vito and Medea show, ladies and gentlemen. The Vito and Medea show. Vito, what's the Twitter fan of the week? Explain what that is, that little contest we have here on the show. It is our Twitter fan of the week. Yeah, self explanatory. Go to at Vito and Vito show in order to qualify, just tweet at us, say something nice, and we'll put you in the Twitter Anything. fan of the week. Vito, who's the Twitter fan? Who's going to our contributor, one of our biggest fans, Mona Slama. Hey, what is she? Yep. At Political Crazy. That's it, at Political Crazy. Go to twitter.com forward slash Political That's Crazy. Right. Follow, give her a follow. Uh, Vito and Vito, every Thursday, 8 p.m. right here on We Are America Radio, the number one political talk station on live365.com. And syndicated across the country. Go to Vito and Vito.com for more information on where to find our syndicated content. When we're on 
with that syndicated content. Vito and Vito.com again. The website at Vito and Vito Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah. Vito, Donald Trump running for president of the United States. What do you think? Oh, my. Oh, my. Here's an no opportunity. This is an opportunist, ladies and gentlemen, if I've ever seen one. I mean, how could you sit here and year after year, this idiot comes forward and says, we're going to run. I'm running for president. I'm thinking about running. Maybe. Right. we got to change the country. I'm not running, but I'm going to have the apprentice come back on next season. I mean, <laughs> shut up, guy. I now mean, you really yeah. decided to join. I remember away. last year he said uh, he wants to run for governor in New York. Yeah, Only yeah, if yeah. he has 100% of the Republican Party support. 100%. Yep. Every single person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, please, God, please. Please, God. God. Please. 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 He's back. I just want, <laughs> I just want when he uh, drops out or, you know, he doesn't get the nomination, yeah. someone can go to him and say, you're fired. <laughs> That's, I, I'm dying to see that. I would, I, you know what? If he does that, I'll write his name in for president if he does that. And I think a bunch Great. of other that, people that, will that, too. You'll your principle, not for yeah. m- money from lobbyists nope. and all this, but for, for some, somebody telling Donald Trump to get fired. But what do you think? You think he's a conservative? I mean, he was talking about China in his campaign speech. Uh, yes, this is my favorite part. I was right. watching this before. Go ahead. Donald Trump, he says, I love China. How can I? I just sold a $15 million apartment to a Chinese man. <laughs> China's <laughs> biggest bank is in my building. <laughs> of course I love China. <laughs> my best friend is Chinese. Uh, so let me get this straight. So, yeah, I mean, my best friend is Chinese. <laughs> Let me get this straight. So Donald Trump is looking to use a political office, the presidency of the United States, maybe to bolster his his business plans. Sounds like Bloomberg. Sounds like a Michael like Bloomberg. The guy who profited like ten billion dollars as mayor. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> I don't right. think he made that much money as mayor. Sold out a lot of contracts to his friends and mm-hmm. gave a lot of political tax shelters to his friends. So and right, that's very not- crony capitalists, yes. and we're, we're a hardcore capitalists on the show here. We are yes. free market advocates, and and Bloomberg and Trump and other people like that. They're crony capitalists. That's something that we despise here on the show. So aside from, you know, the him being the epitome of, like, crony capitalists in Washington because he has so much money, he's only running because he has so much money. Well, this guy, he's bored. You gotta do something. He's gotta do something. I mean, if you had all that money, he, what would you do? I would blow so much cocaine up my nose, and I would buy, sh- yeah. like, a lot of, a lot of hookers to come to my, my, I would have a rotating thing. first lady. Wouldn't you? You see? Yeah. I would. I'd have a lot of fun. Yeah, but we're I have a radio students. show. We have a radio, and we, this is not working out things. so well. Like John Cassidy's. <laughs> like John, that guy. He that has guy. a radio show now. Yeah, I know. Good for him. Fellow host. Yeah, that's right. Who has a, a few billion dollars more than me. Only a few. That's right. That's right. You know, but, uh, I feel I was going to say. Oh, Donald Trump. <laughs> the Donald, the other rich guy. He okay. said, he said, his mother said, what really is successful? This was his story. Not being billions and billions of dollars rich and marrying 20 year olds when you're 90. <laughs> successful <laughs> is when you hold public office. Uh-huh. So the only way you can do that is by, you know, spending a few million of your few billion. So, billion. so every, so everything that Donald Trump has worked for in his life has come to this point. <laughs> yeah. Running for office. Forget the whole real estate going not, to bankruptcy. Yeah, not public office. Not just any office. Not city council, community organizer, district leader, <laughs> community <mayor>. organizer. <laughs> President and the leader of the free world. He's like, you know what? I'm going for top. Never held office before. I had no political experience. Just a lot of money and a big mouth. Hey, now, and I and I had you stuck in 1970 something. I, I know you like to it. say. You have his. Th- I do. Yeah, toupee. If I was, I have a toupee. I dress like Donald and Caitlyn Jenner when I'm off the air. It's a lot of fun, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I can imagine. It's a lot of fun. But why is Donald Trump a real conservative? I don't think so. He's well, an opportunist. Somebody that's like, hey, I want to run. Well, yeah. He says you should close the border. We okay. should bring back our Marines, lower taxes. All right, cool. Is that conservative or is that common sense? <laughs> now, this is what doesn't say he's conservative. That he's donated a lot of money to the Hillary Foundation. Really? Yes. Ah. I know. This is like the E of like, politics. Like, did you this hear? This is the E of politics. <laughs> Extra. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe that? I didn't know that. Yeah, we caught wow. Donald Trump. We caught him. We, we caught Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah, yeah. They were in the back alley, here in a New York alleyway, exchanging briefcases and the yeah. ski mask on. And we saw Donald because we, we recognized that hair. Yeah, we, you know, he donated to Hillary Foundation because wow. Hillary Foundation helps with like uh, environmental issues. Like ah, she personally goes, plants trees with all the money she gets from like Iran <laughs> and Donald. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I thought I thought that Donald Trump was supposed to be, you know, Mister. Mr. Independent, Mr. Moderate, I don't play into the political party system. I mean, like, like Bloomberg, when he was Republican, yeah. Democrat, Independent, uh, what other parties are there? I mean, he makes weekly appearances on Fox News, right? He comes on every once in a while on Fox and Friends, and he talks about the political climate, and he always says, Barack Obama's a bad president, and stuff like that, which we right. tend to agree with him on. Right. But this is the Donald. He, but it, his first name, <laughs> you put the in front of it, you know, he... he, he uh, we fire. have a the in front of our names, The Vito and Vito Show. 
Yes, right. Yes, yeah, right, Donnie. Oh, yeah, we go on TV. Take a walk, bud. <laughs> the Donald. The, the Donald. Vito. The Vito. Me. Vito's. It's like Cher, it's like Madonna, Cher. Donald, Vito. Boom. Uh-huh. You know, we gotcha. all. It's all there. One name. You know who they are. We compare ourselves to drag queens here on the show, ladies and gentlemen, and drag queen favorites like Cher. Listen, you know, he comes off as an independent, moderate voice looking to restore reason and sanity back to this country. I mean, this is what he's running around saying he is or who we identify as and, and what he's going to do. And if you think about it, this guy just seems to me somebody that's coming along and looking up maybe become president of the United States because he's got a lot of money and a lot of friends in Washington. That you know what, pal? Terrible. If this is what you do in your spare time, we got so... I mean, we got problems as a country, if this is the case. If this, listen, tell the guy to come down to the Empire State Building. We'll take him to a nice, you know... Take him to Scores. Look it up. Scores in New York City, if you don't... Those of you who don't know what that is. The best prime We'll give this... Yeah, because yeah, people go there for steaks. We'll go ahead and we'll give our good friend, the Donald, something to do besides wasting everybody's time and running for President of the United States. <laughs> right. We'll do the public a good service. Like having the Donald buy a strippers. Buy a strippers. Right. And prime steak. Because <laughs> apparently, Vito goes to strip clubs and orders steak. No, good not job, just scores. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, high class. Yeah, high class. Yeah. Huh. And the... It's a prime piece of meat. <laughs> when we return into the Vito and Vito show, a little more fun, a little more pizzazz, and a lot more stupidity. When we return right here to Vito and Vito. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. And we're back here at the Vito and Vito show from the basement of the Empire State Building. <laughs> Vito. The basement. We're in the basement. These worms are eating me. Get to the point, good. Hey. Come on. Get to the point. Vito. I came out before as a strong, independent black woman. I know. Good for you, sweetheart. Thank you. You do you. Mm-hmm. That's it. What's your point? That, what? um... What? I'm not, how, I'm not really black. What, like, how... Wh- where do you start? How, how do you... Look, look... Oh, my God. What's this woman's name? Her name is Rachel. Rachel Dozel. Dozel. Okay? This fool... Definitely saying that wrong. I'm whatever. Sorry. Who cares? She's, it doesn't matter. She's gonna make up her own identity anyway. Okay? Shaka Khan comes to the middle. Her name is Rachel, whatever her name is. From the NAACP. <laughs> you know, we heard about this all in the media this week that she is basically... She reinvented herself and her race, and now she went from a white woman, from a working-class family, to a black woman who apparently understands the struggle of African-American women all over the world. I mean, this this lady, this, this is ridiculous. Transracial, first of all. She describes herself as a transracial person. L- let's define what that is. Transracial is used in families where there are... The parents are one race, and they adopt kids who are of different race. So if a white family adopts black children, those children are transracial. I didn't come up with the definitions nor the words. I'm just spewing what's in my sociology textbook. Yeah, that still doesn't make sense. Okay, whatever. Here's the point. This woman calls herself transracial. She always felt like a black woman. I, I don't know just how true this is. Like, I always felt like a woman. Okay. Uh, see, okay. <laughs> because I'm not, we're gonna find ourselves in a bind here because we've we've come out in the past and like yeah, transgender people, good for you, knock yourself because out. Because I just I feel like a woman, because or like I'm a strong, independent black woman. Which one's gonna give us problems? <laughs> because I I I find myself defending the transgender people out there, the transsexuals who are like, listen, my gender is socially constructed, and I don't want to be a mess. I, I want to take on the roles of a feminine woman. I want to wick dresses, I want to paint my nails, I want to put on makeup, I want to go voguing, I want to do whatever the hell it is that women do. That's it, Vito. That's it. Give me face. Right? That's what, that, that's, and I'm alright with that, and you know, vice versa from fa- females to males. So I'm okay with the whole transgender thing. But, because I, I get the idea of a role that has to be played. 
men typically take on the role of masculinity, women typically take on the role of femininity. But you also now take a look and try to compare that logic with transracial people, Mm -hmm. taken out of context of what it originally means. And this fool, Rachel Dozel, is going to run around and say she is a black woman, taking on the roles of a black woman. Of a black person. Please explain to me what the difference is between a white person's role and a black person's role. And I'm dying to hear the stereotypes mm-hmm. that are associated with this. So here, this is where liberals find themselves right. in a ridiculous trap of, inc- you know, social acceptance nonsense. Right, but the logic of transgender mm-hmm. and sex changing, yeah. that makes more sense than racial. Okay. Because... This, this, okay, sex and gender. They're okay. two different things. All I'm right. going to take a quick uh, you know, sociology class I took last semester. <laughs> you, that I is... barely passed because I'm apparently a Tea Party member. Uh-huh. Right, they uh, hate me. Well, okay. Yeah, the feminists, they love me. <laughs> <laughs> the difference between a man mm-hmm. and a male, right. Right, the male is the sex part. You don't when you're born. You don't choose to be a male or female. Just it happens, right? Okay. Really? Because every time I check out an application, it says sex. I say yes, please. Uh huh. I uh, thank you. I <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> Austin Bauer's references. Now a male, let's take Vito for example. Uh, thank you. Can decide to be a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. Thursday nights he's a man, mm-hmm. and as soon as the show is over, he becomes a woman. That's right. Puts on a dress, lipstick, and does more feminine things. Doing what I do best. So do you see how the gender roles are different? Even though Vito still is a male. Okay. His sex organ is still a male, but you, that's hard to change. You have to go through a whole sex. Change mm-hmm. like Caitlyn Jenner to mm-hmm. become a female, get mm-hmm. the whole vagina and everything going. Mm-hmm. So that's how you can change sex, and that's how you can change your gender by the snap of fingers. <laughs> but your race, you also you don't choose that, but you also can't change that. You can't say, "Well, I feel like I'm black," because you can't feel black. You can feel more like a woman, but you can't feel a different race. Well, because I get it. Like you know, most of the time, women they have these roles associated with them. I, I, I can get the transgender argument, makes more sense. But this lady is, again, in the realm, in keeping with the show's theme this week of opportunist, from Jeb Bush seeking to exploit the Republican Party for his own financial gain, from Donald Trump doing whatever, you know, seeking his own egotistical stroke, to this woman looking to classify herself with a movement that she's not even a part of, the NAACP. in the black movement, the NAACP. I mean, come on, look, if you want to be a chapter leader for the NAACP and be white, I don't see why you can't be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see any white people in the Congressional Black Caucus. Again, Democrats are the most racist. I don't care what you say. Because the liberals on the left are going to come out and they're going to use this as a way to basically divide people, divide and conquer. We know their strategy. Saul Linsky 101, right? We get that. But this lady is just seeking, I think, Vito, to make a name for herself. I mean, she's looking for 15 minutes here of fame. In reality, she has 15 minutes of, of, she was on today of foolishness. We're talking about her here on the Vito show. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she's getting publicity. Isn't that what she wanted? Of course. You know, now everyone's talking about Rachel like Dozel because she's a media whore. Yeah. Exactly. Because look, oh, they have the NAACP chapter yeah. who's white, but she can identify as black. It's mm-hmm. like, how ridiculous is this? I mean, it's embarrassing if you are... If you are a black person and you think that there is a role that is associated with black people, you're ridiculous. I, I, I don't see what... I, I just don't see it. Is there black culture? Uh, okay, define that. What rap music? Okay, so what? Me and you listen to rap music. Does that is mean white rap? Uh, uh, am I am I transracial? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, first mm-hmm. of all, I would do what? Attack so that. My sister acts black because she loves Tupac. I think it's Tupac's birthday, actually. I think it was early like in the week. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But you know, she was going around. Happy birthday! Tupac. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Is that she? Is she <laughs> is she acting black? Is that? Yeah, what does it mean to act? Following the stereotypes mean she's black. Bingo. What does it mean to act black? What does it mean to act white? What is this lady Rachel doing? And she's going now. She's also like a, an associate professor or uh, for like African American studies. Whatever. Good for you, sweetheart. Right. Good. You're obviously a scholar. I don't know how. Oh, you studied it, so you, you study can study this. anything. Yeah. You don't have to be any I could be white something. and study African American culture in the civil rights movement. Does that mean that I'm black? Do I really get the full gist of the lessons unless I train change my race to truly identify with well, the black right. community? What the hell does that even mean? You learn about it, but like, <laughs> via, I will never truly understand what it's like to grow up in South Africa. But like, I can't identify with like Africans in Africa, or like, you know, there's certain Under things. Apartheid. Right, I get that. Well, like, you can't understand. Yeah. Certain situations, a certain rate, mm-hmm. that's not you. We can learn about it, understand it, and look at it from a different point of view. Mm-hmm. You know? I can learn about the Holocaust, but I can never have that experience or really truly know but what, what it, mean. But what do you mean that experience? Like, like ex- explain to me here for a second. Like, so I can tell you, oh, I saw the Holocaust, it was terrible. That blah, person blah, blah. went through it, though. They yes. went through the Holocaust. But that is a completely different perspective. You know? 
an experience that you can ever if you can say oh, man that must be terrible yeah you could be but empathetic. you can yes but you can never truly understand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what that really was well because they went through it you, right. that's, like, that's like saying somebody in the civil rights movement you know I but you can't say I feel like a Jew so I'm gonna go talk about the Holocaust like, you sound ridiculous you no, 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 study no, no, about no, 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 it no 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 I feel like a Jew I'm gonna talk about the Holocaust and I'm gonna claim that my ancestors were in the Holocaust right this fool is re- what really set the, like, the alarm was, off yeah. what really set the alarm off was that her she claimed some man who is black was her father and her real father and mother came out and said I don't know why my daughter is all cracked out and why she's running around claiming to be a black woman but uh, she's obviously dropping too much acid wherever the hell she is right now and uh, maybe the, the people of America need to know this that this is a fraud and the parents I commend them good for them you know her, her daughter's crazy now was Michael Jackson trans original? I don't think so Michael Jackson had a skin condition where he just completely went overboard and bleached his whole skin do you like the black Michael or the white Michael I like black Mi- I like both Michaels but if I have to pick one it's black yeah. Michael because that's where like Billie Jean comes from and, yeah, the and beat disco. it you know? the more disco I like disco I like so. Michael oh the ch- kid Mike- Michael oh and kid Michael yeah. he's black Mike. kid black Michael Jermaine <laughs> <laughs> Tito oh no oh. Oh. Oh, Janet J- J- Janet my oldest is little Janet yeah yeah DM yeah look at that that's cool you know when she's younger, Paul Abdul. Oh. Remember that? All right. Uh, you don't, well, so you don't <laughs> we're, remember. We're stuck in an 80s tangent. But let's keep talking about this Rachel lady because another report came out as well. She went to Howard University. Historically all-black university. And she... I guess she was going through this while she was a kid applying to colleges. When she applied to Howard University, they denied her. Because she was... She claimed she was white. So this lady sues Howard University as a white woman claiming discrimination by a black university because she was white gets in. She's like, when's the lawsuit? I don't know what the hell she does. She winds up going to Howard University and she panders around. I guess she gets submerged in African-American culture. Again, whatever that means. And now she comes out a black woman. So, you know, please explain to me the, the blame, not just the hypocrisy, but the stupidity of this woman. To sit up here and claim, mm-hmm. sue, as a white person, claim discrimination by Howard University, and then now she claims to be a black woman, undergoing the black community struggle. And if you're a black person, you should be offended with this, because this woman is basically taking stereotypes by you. Right, she's going, she has a perm, she, is, she tans herself, and she claims she's black. So she's putting herself in blackface. If I go ahead and throw mud on my face, and I walk out, and I, and I make my lips bigger, and I make my ears bigger, and I make my nose bigger, well, you would call that racist and blackface, a minstrel show in a way. Well, excuse me, this woman's doing the exact same thing, and she is, apparently wants to be considered a hero. And there's those at Slate and Salon and all these other crazy leftist websites who are defending this idea of transracial people. Some on the left have actually attacked her, but many on the left are basically saying, what's the big deal? Maybe we should open our eyes to... I don't think you're crazy. You just don't make sense. Baby. It doesn't make any sense. We're not saying because we don't like him. It just doesn't make logical sense. Oh, no. This reminds me of, remember the guy who made a documentary about McDonald's? Like, if you eat McDonald's for 10 times a day, will you get fat? Supersize me. Yeah. 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 Well, number one, that doesn't make, we'll get into that. But the same guy did the same documentary because he was wealthy. Mm-hmm. He took a bus to work at home every day for like a month okay. to see what it's like to be like in the poverty. Right. Right? He did a documentary on that. That is highly offensive, I think. I want to live like a poor person. You mean the average American who takes the metro every day? This is the same thing with this situation. What, yeah. I, I want to be, I'm black, and I see what it's like to be with these people. No, no, you're, no, you're not black. Mm-hmm. You can't choose this. You could study. You could maybe ask questions, and I'm all okay but with You that. can know everything about black culture and history mm-hmm. and support them and live with them and do everything you want. You are not black. Right. You can't run around and say, I am black. I know personally the struggle. You don't. You've lied. No. You should be ashamed of yourself. Ladies, I'm telling you, this lady's disgusting. This doesn't make sense. No. Do you, do you see where the logic is flawed? Well, where this doesn't make sense? This, obviously, liberals on the left is crazy leftists, and she's a crazy leftist, by the way. They don't use logic. They just don't. So, why waste your time? I mean, listen, you can go sit in the corner and say you're black and do whatever the hell you want. But you don't make sense. You have the right to not make sense. I know many wackos in New York. Uh, you know, every day on the subway. That's right. You ever seen people sing and dance in the subway, Vito, for money? See it all the time. It's good entertainment. Who's they actually going to start, you know, cracking down on that? Really? That was good entertainment. That's That along with the man spreading. Oh, well, well, come on. 
Don't need to get me started. Man spreading is illegal here in New York City. Go to the last episode at Vito and Vito.com to hear more information. Vito, close us out here on the Vito and Vito show. Unfortunately, our time has come. And now, <laughs> the end is near. But don't worry, because we have a SoundCloud on the website, Vito and Vito.com, where you can listen to us at any time of the day or night. I don't know what you do, but put us on while you do it. While well, you're putting on your makeup and acting like Caitlyn Jenner, go ahead to Vito and Vito.com and listen to us. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Vito and Vito Show. And be sure to listen to us every Thursday here on We Are America Radio every 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. Go to VinoAndVino.com for more information on our syndicated websites and internet radio stations and AM stations as well. We're expanding more information to come. Vito and Vito signing off. Mm -hmm. We'll be back next week, America. Lock up your mothers. <laughs>